Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Now in this video we are going to be doing another setup on the Zimmer board which I've called our Zim and today we're going to be installing WireGuard uh, and it's going to be installed on Docker and it's going to be composed of two containers, uh, WireGuard itself and also a nice little UI to interact with WireGuard and to set up clients and whatnot. And to tie everything together we're going to be using Portainer and Portainer is going to deploy the docker compose file for us um, as a stack and where we can manage all the containers and everything via Portainer. So that's pretty much the process for this video. Portainer, deploying the docker compose file of two containers, WireGuard and a front-end UI. So let's get into it. So this is my book stack uh, where I have pretty much documentation for any containers that I'm kind of showing off in any videos and what we can see here is the compose file and it's made up of two services. We've got WireGuard itself uh, which we're using the Linux server IO container image, really good image, um, well Linux server IO make really good images. Um, if you're keen I'll have links to everything here, you know the docker hub page, all of that if you want to read more about all of these images but I would rather keep this uh, video streamlined, uh, so we'll just stick to the path of deploying this. But again, all links, references, and whatnot can be found in the description, so you can um, read up more about it. So we're going to be calling it WireGuard. We need to add a capacity add of assigning a bit more permissions for the network administrator. Um, you can, again, explanations for all of this can be found um, either in this book stack um, or in the description. We're going to be setting up some bind mounts for volumes. Uh, so this is just configuration of WireGuard and it just means that we can edit the WireGuard configuration on the Zimmer board and it's mapped to the container. That's a pretty standard process that we do um, on this channel a fair bit. So if you're watching any of my other Docker container sort of videos, that's the process. It's kind of binding mounts um, for services that I'm using that you know need active changes or might need to be tweaked here and there. Uh, otherwise we can use volumes as well. But in this case, binding mounts are fine for us. Two sorts of ports. So port 5000 is for the WireGuard UI. That's how we will interact with the front end. And then the VPN service itself of WireGuard runs on port 51820 on UDP. A key thing here to note is that 51820, we need to port for that on your router. Now, every router is different, uh, so I can't go through that process. But just know you need to port forward 51820 on the UDP port, okay? Um, on the UDP protocol. So just... This won't work unless that's port forwarded. So the second service, again, like I was mentioning, is the UI for WireGuard. Uh, this image here is very well maintained and it's got over uh, like a million pulls. So actively used image. And we're going to be calling it WireGuard UI. Depends on WireGuard, which makes sense. We're also giving it that network admin uh, cap uh, capacity add. So again, explanation and description for that. Both of these... Um, they're all going to talk on the WireGuard network, so that's how they're all going to talk, um, which is great. And we've got some environment values here as well. So all of these can be kind of explained if you go onto the Docker Hub uh, image for the front end and the WireGuard UI. The key ones that we need to worry about are the username and password. For the sake of this video, I'm going to leave these as your admin and password, but please make sure you change these to something... Um, not admin and password if you're using this actually in your day-to-day. -day. So we can see that we've got logging enabled here and the driver we're using is JSON file. So that means that all of our logs are going to be written to a JSON file on the host machine. Um, and we can see here that we've got a max size um, of the JSON file that it can go to. And then a couple more volumes. There's a couple other um, post up and post down scripts essentially that need uh, that we need to put in via when we get access to the WireGuard UI. And this just enables uh, the, the traffic to come in and interact and talk to the, uh, the WireGuard interface. So that's why these are here. So I'll show you where you put those in in a second. There's, there's more explanation around why these things are here and how they work. So if you're keen to read up more about it, there's a link to this page in the description. So essentially, all we need to do is copy this and then go to Portainer and run it in via a stack. So this is 
my Portana uh, instance, and you can see here I've got a couple environments, or three, and the one that we want to go into is the hours in Docker. So if I click here, go to stacks, we can see that I've got a book stack set up. Uh, the reason it's limited is because this was not created via Portana. Portana's just picked it up. Uh, but if we click add stack, and we'll use the web editor because we've got the, uh, the compose file already in my clipboard. We paste it, and it all looks good, right? We've already covered everything. Again, make sure you change these values. And we'll give it a name. So let's just call it WireGuard uh, stack. That will do. Uh, if you're interested, uh, we can actually save environment variables um, here or load them environment environment file if you're keen to do that. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to keep them for the sake of this video as standard as what the compose file is. Because you don't need to deploy this via Portana, just so you know. You can just do a docker and compose up hyphen D and it will deploy it exactly the same. I just want everything managed via my Portana instance. It just makes life easier. What we're going to do is hit deploy the stack. And we can see that it's all up, just like that. So if we go to WireGuard stack, we can see we have two containers running, WireGuard and WireGuard UI, right? And we can see that <clears throat> we've got some published ports here, 5000 and 51820. Again, make sure 51820 is port forwarded on your router, otherwise none of this will work. And the web UI can be accessed on port 5000. So let's access port 5000. And there we go, we are now on the WireGuard UI, so I can just enter in the admin and password and we should be able to log in. Right, I'll just hit sign in and we're in. So it's all pretty much empty here because of course we have no clients, I haven't set anything up yet, but what we need to do is a couple of things. We need to add those post up and post down scripts so we can actually get traffic coming in to the, the WireGuard interface. So all this will actually work. And we then um, can check that our public IP address and everything is set up. So what we can come into is the WireGuard server and we, as again, you can see that the listening port is 51820 and that we, there's a post up script and post down script sitting here that we need to put in the values for. So in my documentation, I'll grab this one, which is the post up and the down and we hit save. And apply the config apply so wireguard is essentially set up from a container point of view and from a server point of view so we can see that my public ip address is all set up here um and that you can see that this is where the configuration file path is on the container but on your host machine um is where you're actually making your those changes if you need to but essentially all we need to do now again make sure you've port forwarded otherwise none of this will work um but once you've got the port forwarding going on um, oh, also, if you want to see like the port forwarding, I have a video called Pi VPN, which goes through the same sort of configuration of setting up WireGuard. Um, if you're keen to see that, go see that video. I'll have a link somewhere, and you can see me going into my router and port forwarding. So I do cover that. I just yeah, no point covering it here. Um, but go watch that video if you're keen to see the router configuration side of things. So essentially, what we need to do now is add a client. So if I go new client name we can leave everything as default i hit submit and there we go so now we have a client all set up and now we can access this by clicking the qr code i'll scan that with the wireguard app on my iphone and then i should be able to get all connected so let's uh, my phone is actually what's recording my face right now so i'm gonna have to grab that i'll, I'll screen record the qr code and we'll essentially go from there right so Here's my phone. What we're going to do is go add a tunnel and then we'll go create from QR code, right? And this is the screen that we're looking at. And if I click QR code, it shows it and it already picked it up. That was easy. And if I go home network, save. And we'll allow it into the configurations. And there we are. So let's just see something really quick right so let's try to connect to the wireguard instance so if i hit go it's probably just going to sit here and nothing's really going to happen but then if i go to wireguard and turn on the vpn we should be able to hit this so you can see here nothing's happening it's just sitting on a black screen go to wireguard 
turn on that VPN, go back to the Safari, hit close on that, and we'll just research it. Right, and now we've got it all set up. So you can see I've hit uh, the WireGuard interface now. It took a little while because I actually didn't uh, apply config <laughs> on the actual WireGuard UI. But here you can see we are here, and I'm on. I don't. I'm not connected to any wireless. So if we go here, you can see Wi-Fi not connected. And if we try to go to my Kubernetes, or my Grafana, which is a different service running. There you go. So you can see it's all connected, just like that. And to prove that it's WireGuard working, it's got a WireGuard. We'll turn the VPN off. We'll refresh. And now you can see down the bottom uh, underneath the IP address, it's kind of just stuck loading. And if I try, I probably access something. Yeah, I'm tapping on things and nothing's even working at this point. Yeah, see, page not found, nothing's loading. So the VPN is definitely working. Let's enable it one more time just to show you, to prove. There we go. As soon as I connected, the VPN was kicking back in. So, um, yeah, that's the client in the on the app side. So that is essentially setting up WireGuard. We've all got it all up and running now. So we should be able to go into status, and we can see that, yes, we did have that connection uh, to my iPhone. It was connected. We transmitted over 4 megabytes, and it was all legit and working. So, yeah, that was definitely all there, which is great. So that was pretty much the process. Now, if we come back to Portainer, we can see that everything was running and we can, you know, we can manage everything through here as well if we want. That was essentially what I wanted to cover was um, setting up WireGuard on the Alzim Zimmerboard server. Uh, I'm going to wipe this and actually set it up properly with my proper username and password and stuff like that. But just wanted to showcase you um, how you can use this Docker Compose file and those commands to set up WireGuard running in a container for yourself. Any questions, any, need any help with anything, whatever, leave a comment in, uh, below. More than happy to help you. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.